time is it? You know what time it is. It's time to hit that subscribe button. You know just where it's at. Right down there. Right down there. And it's time to follow my Instagram. That's Geekly Amanda. G-E-E-K-L-Y Amanda. It's the same on Twitter. Make sure to follow me there too. And it's time to get this reaction video started. Alright y'all. Someone was saying I should uh, react to like the story of the goddess Ganga and the river Ganga and how it came to earth. Well, I was having trouble finding some stuff. But I saw this, the story of the river Ganga, and it's animated. So you know how I love my animations. And I was like, well, they're going to tell the whole story, I guess, the, the river and, and hopefully the guy, how they came to earth, the goddess and everything. Y'all ready to check this out with me? Let's go. Oh, I didn't hear it right. Right. Second try. Go. The story of the river Ganga. Ishan and his grandmother were sitting and talking about Indian culture. Oh, that's cute. Ishan suddenly remembered seeing in a TV program a lot of people praying near the ghats of the Ganga and releasing the ashes in the river. What ashes? He also recalled that the river was very dirty. They throw in trash. He wanted to find out about it and asked his grandmother. Why do people pray on the banks of the river Ganga and throw ashes into it? That's a good question. Grandmother replied, The Ganga is a holy river and people release the ashes of their dead kin in it so that their souls may find salvation. Aww. I remember mother saying that salvation is the rest of the soul after death, added Ishan. According to legends, the Ganga was in heaven but was brought down to the earth and this made it a holy river. Long, long ago, there lived a king, Sagara, in Ayodhya, who had two wives. Kesani was his first wife and they had a son, Asamanjas. But he was very cruel. Oh, why do I always have to have a cruel son? Kesani's grandson. Anshuman was kind and brave, said the grandmother. Sumati was the second wife okay. and she had 60,000 sons. But they were very proud and were not liked by the people. That's more than the Gandhari had when a hundred. King Sagara became very strong and powerful. He had a huge okay. empire. But he wanted to establish the boundary of his empire and tell people who was the king of the land so that they would not be confused. Yeah. To do this, King Sagara performed the Ashwamedha Yagya. That's what the sacrifice horse. Sacrifice of the horse. I knew it. He selected a good horse from his stables and let Only him trot wherever that, he though. wanted to go. Only kings can do that. Interested, Ishan asked. What would happen if someone stopped the horse? Stopping the horse meant challenging the king's authority and a fight would start. Oh! But no. anyone who let the horse pass would be protected by the king. Oh. However, the okay. gods were unhappy with the 60,000 sons of King Sagara as they were I very cruel. over the 60,000 sons. The gods felt that the world would be a better place without them. Oh. So Indra, the king of gods, came down to the earth disguised as a demon. He stole the horse and hid it. Indra! Said the grandmother. Always doing something. Ishan asked, But if Indra stole the horse, how could King Sagar establish oh, that's his good, power? Good question. Very good, Ishan. <laughs> the king was very upset. He called his 60,000 sons to go and find the horse. They looked far and wide, but could not find the horse. Finally, they came across a wise man, Kapila Muni, oh, okay. deep in meditation. The horse was right there by the him? The horse stood near him. The 60,000 sons did not know that Kapila Muni was a sage, and they thought they found the thief. Oh, the yeah, sons ran shouting towards oh, the Oh, you better not hurt a sage. He was suddenly disturbed from his prayers. Kapila Muni opened his eyes and 
glared at them. His eyes red. All the sixty thousand sons <gasps> turned into ashes. Continued the grandmother. Ishan exclaimed, "Oh, what happened then? But what has that to do with the river Ganga?" Well, they had to put those well, other sixty thousand ashes Sama somewhere. <laughs> did not hear from his many sons. He was worried. He sent his grandson Anshuman to find out. Anshuman, being brave, finally found the horse. But he was puzzled by the sixty thousand heaps of ashes. Then the king of birds, Garuda, told oh, Anshuman to take away the horse to finish the yagya. Okay. He also told Anshuman about what happened to his uncles. Upset, Anshuman asked Garuda what he could do about it. So Garuda told Anshuman that to send the souls of his uncles to heaven, their ashes. Must be washed in the Ganga, oh. but the Ganga was in heaven, and it had to be brought down to the oh. earth first. The yagya was finished, but neither King Sagara nor King Anshuman or King Dilip, who became the next kings, could find a way to bring the Ganga down," said the grandmother. "Then what happened, grandmother?" asked Ishan. The next king, Bhagiratha. Was a brave king, but he had no son who could become the next king. Okay, and he was also troubled by the unfinished task. Oh, they of still the had ashes. the ashes. It was still. Oh, he so. left his kingdom to his ministers and went to the Himalayas to pray and do penance. Brahma was very pleased by Bhagiratha's devotion. Upon hearing his troubles, Brahma granted him both the wishes. But he added that the earth was not strong enough to bear the flow of the Ganga, so Bhagiratha must ask for help from Shiva. Got the grandmother continued. <laughs> it got complicated now. Then Bhagiratha prayed to Shiva. Oh, Shiva! Shiva was very pleased. Oh. He promised to help Bhagiratha. However, Ganga was very proud. As she was the favorite of the gods. Oh, all right. She thought that she would sweep away even Shiva by her force. Ganga, with all her force, fell on Shiva's head. Shiva knew of Ganga's pride. Oh, he, to he teach was Ganga gonna, a lesson. Oh, that's what I say. He's going to teach her, her lesson. Shiva stopped her by his matted hair. Coming towards the end of the story, the grandmother said, "Bhagiratha." Was troubled, and he started praying once again. Please, she still on Shiva Shiva's allowed head the there? Ganga to flow gently. <sighs> the waters of the Ganga divided into seven streams. Seven, ah. Oh, three okay. flowed to east, and three to west. Ah. One stream followed the chariot of Bhagiratha. The stream that followed Bhagiratha was so beautiful. That all the gods assembled to see it. Bhagiratha then performed the holy rites. Now he just got it all dirty. Sixty thousand ashes. <laughs> Their souls could finally go oh, to that heaven. Was good. Delighted, Ishan said aloud, "So because the Ganga came down from heaven, it is believed to be holy." But Ishan still looked puzzled and asked his grandmother. If the Ganga is holy, then why do people make it so polluted? Um, Should it not be kept clean? Yes. Smiling a little, grandmother said, "Oh, what a good Ishan, question!" Ishan, that is a very good question. Why don't you ask this question to your classmates and find out? The story that was uh oh, I had it. Wow, that was. First of all, y'all know how I love my animations. <laughs> I do, and I love learning these stories through the animation. But I, oh, that was that was a good one. That was a good one. And it, what a great lesson at the end. Like these rivers and these holy waters and just earth in general and nature, you know, come from the gods. Come from the gods. We're here and, and Mother Nature, whatever you want to call it, the gods, Mother Nature. And we're over here polluting it. Just think of what's in there now. Plastics and trash and ah. Oh. 
we need to get back to the roots. We need to get back to the roots and appreciate the important things in life, the nature and and what was given by, to us by the heavens and take care of it. I love this story. I love this story. I love the lesson. Let me know what you think. Comments, thumbs, all that. Until next time. Mwah.